Here I will sketch how we work the proof for the Gauss-Markov theorem. We'll start with our regression model. First in summation form, yi is function of a constant and x1, 2, xk minus 1 explanatory variables. I choose k minus 1 so that altogether we have k coefficients including the constant. In matrix form of course this reads much easier and the variance of the error term is sigma squared. It's homoscedastic so a constant variance. So we in the OLS estimate, in summation form, is actually difficult to write down. In fact, I won't write it down here. You could check Wooldridge uh, in equation 3.22. In matrix form, it's very easy to write down the OLS estimate, x prime x inverse x prime y. And that's one reason why we prefer the matrix form. The Gauss-Markov theorem now states that amongst all unbiased and linear estimators of beta, the old S estimator beta hat has the smallest variance. So this is what we want to establish. Now there's detailed proofs in summation form. You can find that in Wooldridge in the appendix to chapter 3 and in matrix form you can again find it in Wooldridge there it's in appendix E, E3 or you can use clips which we have linked uh, for the Manchester students in Blackboard. These are clips by Ben Lambert and I will link them in uh, the info to this clip. So here's how a sketch, here's a sketch of the proof. Everything turns around the variance of the OLS estimator beta hat which we have established to be sigma squared times x from x inverse. So the question is, is there any alternative estimator beta tilde that is not equal to beta hat, but for which we find the variance of that beta tilde to be smaller than the variance of beta hat? So that's what we want to establish, and we will show that there isn't any such. Now smaller here is in a matrix sense, because the variance for beta hat is a k by k matrix. So we'll just say at the end of the clip a little bit what that means. So for scalars that would be easy but for matrices what is a smaller matrix than another is not so straightforward. So I'll just outline what the steps what steps are needed and the details are in the sources which I linked before. And since Wooldridge and Ben Lampert use slightly different approaches I'll just illustrate for both of the approaches what the steps are. First we propose an alternative estimator beta tilde. Woodridge proposes that to be a times y and perhaps let's compare that to the OLS estimator beta hat again which is here. So the a takes the role of the x prime x inverse x prime but it's going to be different than that. And Ben Lambert proposes beta tilde to be beta hat plus something else. So plus d times y. So these are the two proposed alternative estimators. First, we need to find the restriction which results from imposing that we are only interested in unbiased estimators. And in Wooldridge we find that this restriction is that A prime X is equal to the identity matrix and in ben for Ben Lampert that restriction is that DX is equal to zero. Next step, we want to find the variance of beta tilde. In Woodridge we find that to be sigma squared times a prime a. Ben Lambert finds this to be sigma squared x prime x inverse plus sigma squared d times d prime. Now it's useful to compare this to our variance of the OLS estimator. That first part in the Ben Lambert proof is of course just the same as the variance of beta hat. Next step is to find the difference between the variance of beta tilde and the variance of beta hat. So for Wooldridge we find this difference to be a, a slightly complicated term and it's here, I won't read it out. And for Ben Lambert it's pretty obvious from the previous line that the difference is sigma squared times d times d prime. Now we call that the asterisk term because we refer to it in the next step which is that we establish that that difference is large or equal to zero in the matrix sense. We call that positive semi-definite. Wooldridge 
establishes that from a result that he earlier discussed in Appendix D, in particular result D5, the result of on item potent matrices. Uh, look for the details there and the proof. For Ben Lambert, establishing that is somewhat more straightforward. As it turns out that every matrix of the type D times D prime, where you multiply a matrix with itself transposed, is indeed positive semi-definite. So let's recap how the proof works. We propose an alternative estimator, beta tilde. We find out what its variance is, conditioning on having an unbiased estimator. Once we find that variance, we find out what the difference of that variance to the variance of the OLS estimator is. And then eventually we establish that that difference is positive, regardless of how we define the different estimates or what the particulars of the estimators are. And by showing that this difference is positive, we have established that there cannot be another estimator of the form beta tilde in either of the two definitions that has a variance that is smaller than the OLS estimator variance.